we're going to go through a sewage damage problem or a limiting reagent problem, but I'm going to show you two different perspectives on it that hopefully give you some understanding conceptually of what we're doing when we do stoichiometry analysis. I'm going to do a BCA chart, and then in addition to that, I'm going to work this out graphically. So our starting conditions here are as follows. We have 32 moles of silver metal. We are reacting with 11 moles of oxygen gas. Okay, we have no product to start. And so what we're doing is we've kind of contrived this system where we have a certain amount of silver metal and a certain amount of oxygen gas. And we don't know which one will be used up first. So we don't know whether we'll run out of silver forming silver oxide or whether we'll run out of oxygen as we form silver oxide. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at 32 and 11 graphically. Where we started with 32 silver and 11 oxygen and 0 silver oxide. So what we're going to do is every time I move over a space, I'm going to use up a certain amount of chemical. So every time I move over one in my reaction progress axis, I'm going to use up four moles of silver. So I'm starting with 32. So as I move over, I'm going to go down to 28, and then down to 24, and 20, and 16, 12, 8, 4, almost out of silver. And then eventually I run out at this particular time. With the oxygen, since as I move over one, I'm, I'm using up the same amount of chemical in proportion, I use four silvers for every one O2. So as I move over one space, instead of going down four, like I did for silver, I'm going to go down one fourth that amount. I'm going to go down one mole per space. So I'm going to go from 11 to 10 to 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four. Now at this point, I now have equal quantities. I have four moles of each. Continuing on, three to two to one to zero. So what we can see is is that the fact that I use four silver atoms for every one molecule of oxygen maybe a little bit there means that I'm going to use up my silver much faster. Now I started with significantly more moles of silver significantly less oxygen, but I also used up my silver significantly faster. So the question is, well, which one of these will run out? So as I'm going throughout the reaction, when I get to the point where I hit zero on either one of these, that is when my reaction will stop. So it's at this time that my reaction is done. And at that time, I still have some remaining oxygen. So I have an excess of oxygen here that we'll look at and then I've run out of silver. So silver, then, would be my limiting reagent. And I would have excess reagent for the O2 in this particular case. Now, when we look at the silver oxide being formed, we have two options. We're starting with zero. So as we move over one, we're either going up a half as fast as the silver went down or we're going up twice as fast as the oxygen went down. Either way, every time we move over a square, we're going to be going up two. So as this goes down four, this goes up two. As this goes down one, this goes up two. So we go two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and then 16, and then we stop. At that point, we've run out of silver metal. There's no way we can make any more silver oxide, and our reaction is over. So if we look at this particular point, we would find that we've made 16 moles of product of silver oxide. So let's go ahead and plug some of those numbers in. 16 moles is what we end up with of silver oxide. We finished with 3 moles and 0 for our other two amounts. So we finished with 3 and 0. If you're unfamiliar with the BCA charts, you want to see an extensive rundown of them, you can go back to one of my previous videos on this. Uh, but basically we're looking at before the reaction started, after the reaction was completed, and how much they changed. So for example, the silver started with 32 moles, and it was zero. So it changed by decreasing by 32 moles. The oxygen started with 11, ended with 3, so it changed by decreasing by 8 moles. And the silver oxide went from 0 to 16, so it increased by 16. Now when we look at the proportionality here, what we see is that 16 to 8 to 32 is a ratio of 4 to 1 to 2. And so the 
proportionality of my balanced reaction is not in what I start or what I end with, but it's by how much is reacting. So in this case, 32 moles of this reacted with 8 moles of this to produce 16 moles of this, and that's where my ratios come in. I could start it with any amounts. I could change this to a 12 or a 15. It would actually change nothing about the reaction except for how much I have left over. If I change this, I'll end up being able to react some more of this. If I go up or down, I'll be able to react less. But the amounts that react will still be proportional in a 4 to 1 to 2 ratio. And if we go back to our graph, if we were to analyze this from a slope perspective, the slope of this line is negative 4, if we include one space. The slope of this line is negative 1, and the slope of this line is positive 2. So these slopes are proportional in that 4 to 1 to 2 ratio. So that's hopefully going to give you some idea of what these mean. Now at a fundamental level, this means four atoms of this react with one molecule of this to make two formula units of this, or alternatively, four moles of this react with one mole of this to make two moles of this. But this gives you a little background picture to understanding what's going on. Uh, when you get into a higher level of chemistry, you might stop the reaction in the middle because there's a reversibility angle to it. So you might actually stop here, and then you kind of want to be able to understand, okay, well, what does a partially completed reaction look like in terms of how much it reacted? Do my coefficients still apply? Yeah, they apply in how much things have changed. So this is a good perspective to kind of compare the two especially if you've only worked out problems in kind of one of those systematic manners where you know what to do, but you don't really know what it is you're doing.